Hi and welcome to my next video. In this video I would like to deal with what I call research identification and to get there um, for, to get to the documentation you go to wiki.lib as usual uh, click on this link here the IR guide link scroll down to customization and then scroll down to research identification using the ORCID server so we click on there uh, just a few notes, uh, it's very important to eliminate author name ambiguity with researcher information systems. And there I have some motivations. The implementation of ORCID on DSpace uses what we call the authority control mechanism. If you want to know more about that, please click on that link. And then here I have some uh, researcher identifier references. So there's the ORCID ID, the researcher ID with Thomson Reuters that you're familiar with. And then there's an international standard name identifier as well. And then some bug reports. Uh, we submitted this bug report about uh, duplicate author names in the discovery browse index. And um, the fact that you can't update the authority index when Tomcat security is enabled. So we submitted those two bug reports. And um, we did have ORCID implemented but uh, the repository manager requested that it be disabled because it caused problems, with, as I said, with this bug report uh, with the duplicate authority, uh, with the duplicate author names being displayed. But anyway, if you'd like to implement it, um, please click, We're going. To, I will show you by clicking on this link. If you'd like to follow up these bug reports, please contact Matthew Bass of the ORCID organization. He's uh, represented for the Africa or Europe EMA region. Um, he's trying to um, expedite uh, the fixing, the bug fixing of these two. Okay, so let's go into the implementation. So we click on ORCID there, and then there's some information for those who are not familiar with ORCID, what the ORCID does, and what it is, uh, how to um, create res uh, local researcher ORCID records, uh, and so on. So what are the requirements before we even implement this feature? You have to make sure with your campus uh, network administrator that you have access to these two API websites of ORCID. You, can, uh, you will need this just for normal public read access if you're not an ORCID member, but you will need access to this site if you're an ORCID member. So please go and consult with your campus network administrator before implementing this. About the implementation, there is no relation between the user accounts in DSpace and the item metadata updated by the ORCID feature. So all the ORCID feature does is update the metadata per item about the DC contributor author, the DC contributor advisor, and DC contributor editor. We added advisor and editor. So it updates the metadata per item um, in these metadata items. There is absolutely no link between the user accounts in DSpace. So this is not a researcher profile system on DSpace. This is simply updating each item with the ORCID metadata uh, information from ORCID per author, per advisor, and per editor, the way we implemented it. That confused me a lot in the beginning. I thought there was a relation. There is no relation. And again, just a warning, before implementing, please check that bug report. Okay, so how do we do this? All right, first thing to do is we're going to log into the server. So let's do that. Um, I've logged into my local server here. Uh, if you remember, it's that uh, server with the uh, 192.168.27 address. So I've logged into the server as the DSpace user, and then we go and modify the dspace config file and uh, let's do that and we paste that in there okay so now what we want to look for is this plugin we need to enable this plugin we'll have to remove the comments to enable that plugin there as mentioned there so let's go and look for that we type control w and we're going to try and find plugin 
plugin dot name dot org dot dot content let's see if that finds it content no there's a lot of them Whoa. there are a lot of these dspace plugin and contents here so let's try and looking for what is this? Solar Author Ah, there we go. There we found it. So here it says the uncomment to enable Orchid Authority Control. Which I did previously. Uh, and here I tried to do this video previously but the, the, the video crashed. So there, there were two comment there were two hash signs of comments which were removed to enable it. So we have the authority control, orchid authority control enabled, and we type control O to write it out to save that. Then what's the next step? We have to enable this consumer. So let's look for that. Let's try and see if my search will take a copy and paste. So let's copy that. Let's see and try control W to search and then do I get a paste in there? Yeah, there we go. So let's try again another one okay so there we want to make sure here that the event dispatcher default consumers has authority in the front there so I added that authority in the front there as per the example here there I added authority there and then we save the file okay and the same thing that in the dspace config file so the next thing to do then is to um, define um, the metadata to look, do the lookup. So again, in the dspace config file, so we need to look for um, this one here in the config file. So let's copy that. Control W, uh, right click and paste it in there, and let's have a look. Okay, so all of this was commented out, which are uncommented. And I added these two. We wanted to do that as well on our production server. So I added those two. And I've got the solar authority there. So forth. Okay. Right. Then the next step is to now do the authority services, Orchid Authority Service XML file. So we get out of there. And we want to go into here. Copy that and paste that in there. And we're going to look for this property name field default. So we go down, keep looking there. Okay, there we go, property names defaults. Okay, so now I added the, these two entries here. There, those two entries are added by copy and pasting from here. And then I save the file like that and exited the file. So then the last step is to rebuild this space, which I'm not going to do. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. And after the rebuild, you run this command to create the actual index authority. Um, just remember, it might take a long time. If you have many items, it has to go through every item in the metadata. It takes quite a while. Okay. So prepare yourself to do that. Then, um, if Tomcat is security is enabled, this has problems as per the bug report which we submitted so to uh, to start up the index authority it's a good idea just to disable Tomcat security and then re-enable Tomcat security the other thing to do before running that that command is also to make sure that the that it has full read write permissions to the solar folder okay um, and then also please w read this um, about authority control etc it's not exactly clear to me, but it's good background information. And then the last step is to maintain the authority index and to run run it re regularly. And here are the instructions to run it regularly. Um, and if you want, you can e export the authority records uh, for archiving or, and for um, lookup. And then I have some screenshots of what it looks like when it's enabled. When it's enabled, you get the lookup button on the submission form. You do the lookup, or on the IT, you, you, if you do an item metadata um, edit, you get the lookup button. Then it does the lookup there, 
and if it um, finds it will finds the lookups normally in italics no, no, no the italics is already previously looked up anyway um, use that and um, that's how it works uh, when it's uh, properly enabled and screenshots show you okay I just want to check if there's anything else of interest uh, before I finish this video as I said please review these two bug reports before you decide to implement this and um, please support Matthew Base in trying to get the uh, this awkward implementation done correctly on DSpace thank you very much goodbye